type of social enterprise, fair trade. Fair trade is an organized social movement that aims to help producers in developing countries achieve better trading conditions and promote sustainability. Members of the movement advocate higher prices for exporters as well as improved social and environmental standards. Fair trade organizations are committed to ensuring that producers are paid a fair price for what they produce. The movement seeks to promote greater equity in international trading partnerships through dialogue, transparency and respect. It promotes sustainable development by offering better trading conditions to and securing the rights of marginalized producers and workers in developing countries. Two short videos are going to explain what a fair trade is. A supermarket. Here we buy almost everything we need in our day-to-day -day lives. Our decisions on what to buy are based on taste, quality and price. But what you might not know is that the decisions we make can have a significant impact. Fair trade products vastly improve the working and living conditions of families in developing countries. But how does fair trade even work? Let's take this pack of coffee as an example. Coffee is one of the most important agricultural products on the global market. And it goes on a long journey before it ends up on our store shelves. For the over 30 million coffee farmers around the world, the coffee we buy means a lot of hard work. At the same time, they earn very little money from it. This is due to speculation in financial markets and little to no influence on the pricing of the product, as well as unstable yields caused by changes in temperature and climate. Coffee farmers are powerless in the face of the free market. Fair trade seeks to change that. Fair trade coffee farmers don't work alone. They are members of cooperatives and organized democratically. There are many advantages to this system. The farmers know the true value of their product, which makes it far easier for them to negotiate prices. They have access to credit and are able to learn from each other through a constant exchange of information. A central component of the fair trade system is the minimum price which is the minimum that farmers' organizations are paid when selling their products through fair trade. Additionally, producer organizations receive the fair trade premium. It is up to the farmers and workers to decide how to use the premium. They might build wells and hospitals, buy better farming equipment, or invest in switching to organic farming. Having a stable income can drastically improve a whole family's opportunities. At the same time, it minimizes the risk of exploitative child labor. The environment benefits from fair trade too. Preserving natural habitats and the climate are key aspects of fair trade. The use of genetically modified organisms is forbidden, and water is used as sparingly as possible. The fair trade standards are the requirements that producers and the businesses who buy their goods have to follow. They are developed by Fair Trade International in consultation with producers, businesses, and all members of the fair trade system. Fair trade producers have a 50% say in all key decisions made. Our independent certification body, FlowCert, checks and monitors that the fair trade standards are being met. Now, back to our pack of coffee. After being harvested and dried, the beans are transported to processors who roast, prepare, and repackage the coffee for sale. Coffee is the most well-known fair trade product. However, there is a huge range of fair trade products available, from bananas, ice cream, rice, cocoa, sugar, herbs, honey, dried fruits and nuts, to fruit juices, tea and wine. Even flowers, cotton, and sports balls can be fair trade certified. There are over 30,000 fair trade products on sale in more than 125 countries worldwide, in supermarkets, cafes, restaurants, and even trains and planes. So now, it's over to you. In your daily shopping, look for the fair trade mark and choose products that change lives for over 1.5 million farmers and workers worldwide. Fair trade, the power is in your hands. Fair trade is all about improving lives. 
But we don't do that through charity. There's no handout in the fair trade movement. In so many countries, in Africa, in Asia, in Latin America, the laws protecting workers are very, very weak or they're not enforced. So for much of the agricultural working population around the world, life is very hard and it's not very safe. That's what fair trade is trying to change. In Ghana, for example, historically child labor has been a huge problem. We find that fair trade and cocoa co-ops are building schools, creating scholarship funds, and sending kids on to high school and on to college. In Rwanda, we find communities that have invested in clean water and women's health. In Uganda, vanilla farmers get 8% of the final export price on average. But by connecting with the fair trade buyers here in the U.S., these small family farmers in Uganda have been able to get a fabulously higher price because they're not selling to local middlemen. So with the higher price, they in turn have been able to invest in the quality of the product. And the vanilla now is just incredible. The biggest change that we see on large fair trade farms and in the apparel factories is they're working in a safer working condition. They're getting bonuses as a result of fair trade. Workers are able to sit at the table and address problems with management. So there's a level of confidence that you just don't see outside in other workplaces. And so there's this invisible dividend in the fair trade world that you can't see, but you know it when you talk to a farmer. It's hope and pride and dignity because people are solving their own problems through fair trade. Fair trade commodities are goods that have been exchanged from where they were grown or made to where they are purchased and have been certified by a fair trade certification organization. Fair Trade International sets international fair trade standards and supports fair trade producers and cooperatives. The movement focuses in particular on commodities or products which are typically exported from developing countries to developed countries, but also consumed in domestic markets, for example Brazil, India and Bangladesh. 60% of the fair trade market revolves around food products such as coffee, tea, cocoa, honey, wine, sugar, fresh fruit, chocolate and bananas. Non-food commodities include crafts, textiles and flowers. Most fair trade marketers believe it is necessary to sell the products through supermarkets to get a sufficient volume of trade to affect the developing world. Fair trade is a certification system designed to allow consumers to identify goods which meet agreed standards. Fair trade certification purports to guarantee not only fair prices but also the principles of ethical purchasing. These principles include adherence to international labor organizations' agreements, such as those banning child and slave labor, guaranteeing a safe workplace and the right to unionize, adherence to the UN Charter of Human Rights, a fair price that covers the cost of production and facilitates social development, and protection and conservation of the environment. The fair trade certification system also attempts to promote long-term business relationships between buyers and sellers and greater transparency throughout the supply chain. Fair trade is grounded in three core beliefs. First, producers have the power to express unity with consumers. Secondly, the world trade practices that currently exist promote the unequal distribution of wealth between nations. Lastly, Buying products from producers in developing countries at a fair price is a more efficient way of promoting sustainable development than traditional charity and aid. There are 10 principles of fair trade. Principle 1. Creating opportunities for economically disadvantaged producers. Poverty reduction through trade forms a key part of the organization's aims. The organization supports marginalized small producers. It seeks to enable them to move from income insecurity and poverty to economic self-sufficiency and ownership. Principle 2. Transparency and Accountability 
The organization is transparent and accountable to all its stakeholders. It finds appropriate participatory ways to involve employees, members and producers in its decision-making processes. It ensures that relevant information is provided to all its trading partners. Principle 3. Fair Trading Practices The organization trades with concern for the social, economic and environmental well-being of marginalized small producers and does not maximize profit at their expense. Suppliers respect contracts and deliver products on time and to the desired quality and specifications. Principle 4. Fair Payment A fair payment is one that has been mutually negotiated and agreed by all through ongoing dialogue and participation, which provides fair pay to the producers. Fair payment is made up of fair prices, fair wages and local living wages. Principle 5. Ensuring no child labor and forced labor. The organization adheres to the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child and national and local law on the employment of children. The organization ensures that there is no forced labor in its workforce. Principle 6. Commitment to non-discrimination, gender equity and women's economic empowerment and freedom of association. The organization does not discriminate in hiring, remuneration, access to training, promotion, termination or retirement based on race, national origin, religion, disability, gender, sexual orientation, union membership, political affiliation, HIV status or age. Principle 7. Ensuring good working conditions. The organization provides a safe and healthy working environment for employees and members. It complies with national and local laws and international labor organizations' conventions on healthy and safety. Principle 8. Providing capacity building. The organization seeks to increase positive developmental impacts for small, marginalized producers through fair trade. Principle 9. Promoting fair trade. The organization raises awareness of the aim of fair trade and of the need for greater justice in world trade through fair trade. Principle 10. Respect for the environment. Organizations which produce fair trade products maximize the use of raw materials from sustainably managed sources in their ranges, buying locally when possible. They use production technologies that seek to reduce energy consumption and where possible use renewable energy technologies that minimize greenhouse gas emissions. What is the fair trade minimum price? The fair trade minimum price defines the lowest possible price that the buyer of fair trade products must pay the producer. The minimum price is set based on a consultative process with fair trade farmers, workers and traders and guarantees that producer groups receive a price which covers what it costs them to grow their crop. When the market price is higher than the fair trade minimum price, the trader must pay the market price. What is the fair trade premium? It's what makes fair trade unique. It's an additional sum of money paid on top of the fair trade minimum price that farmers and workers invest in social, environmental and economic developmental projects to improve their businesses and their communities. They decide democratically by committee how to invest the premium. The most typical and influential examples are GEPA. The GEPA is Europe's largest alternative trading organization. The abbreviation GEPA stands for Gesellschaft zur Förderung der Partnerschaft mit der Dritten Welt MBH, literally meaning Society for the Promotion of Partnership with the Third World. The main goal of GEPA is to improve the living and working conditions of people in the South. Fifteen regional fair trade centers in the Federal Republic of Germany supply approximately 800 shops worldwide and roughly 6,000 action groups with fairly traded groceries and handcrafted products. Ben and Jerry's is an American company that manufactures ice cream, frozen yogurt and sorbet. Back in 2005, they were the first ice cream maker in the world to use fair trade certified ingredients. In 2010, they decided to commit fully to the cause, across all their flavors and all the countries where their ice cream is sold. 
They made sure that every possible ingredient was fair trade certified by 2011 in Europe and did the same in the United States by 2014. A short video on why fair trade matters to them. Did you ever wonder where your bananas come from? What's the life of a banana farmer like? Well, imagine hot sun, lots of rainy weather, and hard work to grow bananas the right way. But the hardest part can be when the farmer goes to sell her crop. She doesn't have a lot of say about how much she can charge for her bananas. Someone from an export company just shows up at harvest time and often she has to take the price she's offered. After all, if she doesn't sell them to the company, another farmer will, and her bananas will just go bad. She'll have nothing to show for all of her hard work. That doesn't seem fair at all. But fair trade provides another way. The farmer can band together with other farmers and build a cooperative. Now they can decide as a group who to sell their bananas to. And that way, they can demand a fair price for bananas grown the right way. A few extra cents from banana lovers all around the world translates to big lifestyle improvements for the farmer and the chance to build a better future. And knowing that the farmer got a fair shake making the bananas makes them taste a little more sweet for the customers. A better banana. A better business. A better world. It's simple. It's fair. Fair Indigo was founded to change the way the apparel industry works. Eco-friendly, organic and fair trade, Fair Indigo designs and produces stylish clothing for both men and women. The apparel and accessories are created from organic, natural and recycled fibers. The Fair Indigo Foundation supports education and Peruvian communities where the clothing is made, paying for teachers' salaries, building a new classroom and provided equipment for a computer lab in two schools. Fair Hill Swine Fair Hills began as a fair trade wine project in South Africa but quickly expanded to additional projects in Chile and Argentina. Fair Hills growers are paid a fair price for the grapes used to create the wine. Additionally, the growers' communities in South Africa, Chile and Argentina have benefited with the building of a daycare center, a library and a community hall. Here is the Fair Hills project in a video. Fair Hills is an innovative and very progressive empowerment concept based around one of South Africa's best known and respected wine cellars, the de Toyskloof cellar at the foot of the de Toyskloof mountains in the beautiful Western Cape. 22 grape growing farms are part of this initiative, which is facilitated by the Origin Wine Group. The first and most important goal was achieved when all 22 participating farms became accredited to the internationally acclaimed Fair Trade Alliance. This allowed the Fair Hills project to use the Fair Trade trademark globally. Fair Hills rapidly became one of the world's leading fair trade projects. A joint body was formed, guiding the project to achieve the expectations of the community. November 2005 saw the organization of the first annual sports day, and this provided the important foundations for the formation of a Fair Hills sports club within the community. The renovation of three daycare centers was targeted as the first major project for Fair Hills. The goal was to upgrade, expand and build new classrooms, kitchens, playgrounds and other facilities to accommodate more children in each venue. Construction work started in February 2006 and was successfully completed in June, thereby providing the children with exposure to early childhood development as well as creating new job opportunities for some of the adults. During December 2006, the Fair Hills Association unveiled another landmark in its short existence by opening the Fair Hills Community Center, the first official community center for the project. Since its opening, the Fair Hills Community Center has become an important milestone for the project. It serves as a conspicuous gathering place for educational projects, seminars, cultural and other recreational activities. It also houses the office of the Fair Hills Association and will form the foundation for the running of the Fair Hills project as a financially sustainable business. 
During March 2007, a youth club was established to provide a range of fun, informal activities through which young people can learn. Knowledge and skills are taught in an open and informal manner in order to maintain interest and maximum participation. The Women's Club was established during March 2007. The club provides a pleasant environment for women to become actively involved with each other whilst providing them the opportunity to express their needs. The club aims to promote the building of self-confidence, self-esteem and self-motivation and provides the ideal environment for women to learn about the dangers of alcohol abuse and fetal alcohol syndrome. The Fairhills Project provides an opportunity for previously disadvantaged adult members to complete their basic education. The project also caters for specific areas such as adult literacy, so they will all be able to read and write. Through its various enrichment programs, the project provides an opportunity for young adult and more mature adult members to enroll in additional educational courses such as mathematical skills, business economics and English, to name but a few. The project also assists members to obtain their provisional driver's licenses. One of the most ambitious job creation objectives is currently being achieved through a newly established business center in the form of an arts and crafts workshop. There is also a retail shop and a restaurant area for tourists. The workshop provides employment for 14 young women and offers the necessary training for them to successfully run their business enterprise. The Fairhills Project is a wonderful South African success story. It raises the bar higher for community projects of this kind. Fair trade guarantees a better deal for third world producers and Fair Hills guarantees that it will make a difference to the lives and well-being of the people working with wine down here at the foot of the great continent of Africa. As a case study of fair trade, we present divine chocolate. Eating is an integral part of our lives. It plays an important role in our physical, emotional, and social well-being. But the ability to grow that food and receive a sustainable income can play an equally or even more important role in the lives of the farmers who we depend on for it. Smallholder cocoa farmers are some of the poorest people in the world. They earn less than $400 a year from their cocoa crop, and it means that they aren't earning enough to sustain themselves and their families. This is a problem for all of us, though, because smallholder farmers are probably responsible for delivering 70 percent of the world's food so we're relying on them for the food that we eat. Many farmers worldwide are making efforts to change that paradigm as a group of cocoa farmers in Ghana did in the early 90s with the support of a fair trade group and the goals of running a successful organization that empowered farmers, increased women's participation and developed sustainable cocoa cultivation they set up a cooperative called Kwapa Coco. The farmers organised themselves at a village level and they were first of all in 22 villages and they elected their local executive and they had uh, instituted quotas for women so you had to have two out of five women on the executive and they very quickly developed a reputation for being honest and efficient and I think the best way to illustrate that is that they bought weighing scales so farmers could finally trust the transaction. As Coapa Coco began to thrive, they decided to expand beyond the sale of cocoa and create the first fair trade chocolate bar aimed at the mass market. They recognized the real value in cocoa went beyond the crop itself. There was value in the marketing of the final product, the chocolate. That's when Sophie Tranchel came on board. Joining a company that was owned by cocoa farmers was an amazing opportunity for me because everybody loves chocolate so it's a perfect way to open the conversation about have you thought about where this product comes from, have you thought about the people that work to grow the cocoa and then the idea that you had such a fabulous brand name as Divine and you had a wonderful range of chocolates and it was owned by cocoa farmers, it was just an irresistible combination. Fair trade is important because it gives consumers a chance to vote with their wallet on how they want to see businesses run, such as paying farmers a living wage and making sure that their environmental practices are upheld. 
A growing demand for fair trade products and owning their own premium chocolate company has helped Coapa Coco become the biggest cocoa farmers cooperative in the world. And that success has had a huge impact on the lives of its members. Copper Cocoa Farmers own 44% of the company and for that they have two seats on the board which means that they have a say in how the company is run, they have full transparency or about all the decisions in the company but they also get 44% of any of the distributed profits which obviously really helps them in terms of their economic stability. Some of the other impacts that working with Divine has had is that they've really been able to make good on their commitment to women's empowerment. And so we've supported them in that. We've invited women over to America and over to Britain to speak for themselves. And those women have become ambassadors in their communities. And in 2006, they elected more women than men onto their national executive. And in 2010, they elected their first woman president. And in 2014, their second woman president. And that means that a woman is the head of a farmer's cooperative, which grows 48 thousand tons of cocoa, which is more than one and a half percent of the world's cocoa. So I think that's pretty amazing. For consumers, choosing products with the Fair Trade certification label or from social enterprises that are going beyond fair trade can be a powerful endorsement for change. Being a socially responsible company is not just about making a lot of money that you can give away later on. There are so many opportunities to have business models that integrate positive impact along the way. Of course, when it comes to consumers, quality matters too. At the end of the day, the chocolate is selling because it's good chocolate. And that's the entry level and buyers making decisions on whether or not to put you on the shelf. Divine Chocolate is made with the best natural ingredients. But Divine Chocolate is more than delicious. It is 100% fair trade and 44% owned by the farmers who grow the cocoa. So when you enjoy the chocolate, so do the family farmers who grow it. We deliver four income streams for the cocoa farmers. We pay a guaranteed fair trade minimum price. We pay a, a $200 a tonne social premium, which the important thing about that is they get to decide how they spend that money. We invest 2% of our turnover in projects that's recognising that if you're going to work with remote and rural communities, they need all sorts of assistance to help them run their business. So we've helped them on training in agricultural practices, in being a co-op, in developing their own database. And then the fourth income stream is the profit income stream. Because they own 44% of the company, they get 44% any of the distributed profits. Working for Divine Chocolate is, is quite different. I find it more meaningful that I'm able to impact the lives of farmers in Ghana. Divine Chocolate is proud to be a certified B Corporation. B Corporations are leading the global movement of using business as a force for good. As a B Corp, Divine aims to achieve social and environmental goals through practices, products, and profits. You can be a force for good too when you support B Corp and fair trade companies. Divine becoming a profitable company is really exciting. It proves that a business model like this can work, that fair trade, consumer choice, and farmer ownership can all result in a profitable company. I passionately believe that we can make the world a better place by being discerning about the goods and services that we buy. And Divine wouldn't be here today if consumers hadn't made a nuisance of themselves and gone into shops and asked for products that aren't there. Those people used the power of their consumption to make the world a better place. Discover the great taste of Divine Chocolate. You can find it in many stores or shop online at divinechocolate.com. Divine Chocolate is an organization established in the UK in 1998. It is the only fair trade chocolate company that is also co-owned by Cocoa Farmers. Divine Chocolate is co-owned by the 85,000 farmer members of Coapa Coco, the cooperative in Ghana that supplies the cocoa for each bar of Divine. As owners, they get a share in the profits, a say in the company and a voice in the global marketplace. Their aim is to continue to deliver delicious chocolate and a social business model supporting local cocoa farmers. Divine Chocolate is licensed by Fairtrade America. For chocolate to carry the Fairtrade mark, every ingredient must be Fairtrade. The percentage of ingredients that are certified Fairtrade must be displayed on the packaging and at least 20% of the content, dry weight, must be certified. In the early 1990s, the structural adjustment program involved the liberalization of the cocoa market in Ghana. A number of leading farmers came to realize that they had the opportunity to organize farmers 
to take on the internal marketing function. This would mean that they could set up a company to sell their own cocoa. These farmers pooled resources to set up Kuapa Coco, a farmer's co-op which would trade its own cocoa and thus manage the selling process more efficiently than the government cocoa agents. Kuapa Coco waits, bags and transports the cocoa to market and carries out all the necessary legal paperwork for its members. After seeing the benefits Kuapa gains for its members, more and more farmers wanted to join and the association now has around 65,000 members organized in approximately 1,400 village societies. The cocoa farmers voted at their 1997 meeting to invest in a chocolate bar of their own. They decided that they would aim to produce a mainstream chocolate bar to compete with other major brands in the UK. Kuapa helped set up the Day Chocolate Company in 1998. The company was named in memory of Richard Day, a key member of the team at Twin that had helped Kuapa Coco develop its organization. Divine Fair Trade Milk Chocolate, made from Kuapa's best of the best fairy traded cocoa beans, was launched in October 1998 and by Christmas 1998 had made it onto the supermarket shelves. In 2006, original Day Chocolate founder, the body shop made the decision to donate its shares in the company to Kuapa Coco. So now the farmer's cooperative has an even bigger stake in Divine. On January 1st, 2007, Day Chocolate changed its name to Divine Chocolate LTD to more closely align the company with their flagship brand. Their development aims are parallel to the historic roots of the fair trade movement by challenging the terms of trade and the way the chocolate industry operates. By owning the largest share of Divine, farmers have a seat at the table, more benefits go to smallholder farming families and communities, and they have more control over their own destinies. The farmer's ownership stake in the company means that Kuapa Coco has a meaningful input into decisions about how Divine is produced and sold. As shareholders, the farmers also receive a share of the profits from the sale of Divine. How are the fair trade premiums delivered to farmers? For over 15 years, Divine has delivered more, contributing 2% of its gross revenue each year into a producer support and development fund. This fund aims to increase farmer capacity and skills base and to fund programs that innovatively address the emerging needs of the cooperative. Projects supported by the fund are aimed particularly at empowerment of women, maintaining good governance and testing different farming techniques, and include an adult literacy and numeracy program and a model farm project. Let's see Divine Chocolate Story. When you're sharing a delicious bar of Divine Fair Trade Chocolate, let your mind take a journey to Ghana, where the cocoa is carefully harvested by the farmers of the Kuapa Coco Cooperative. Papa pa means best of the best. The farmers use the extra fair trade money to improve their communities. And because Kuapa Coco co-owns the company, when you enjoy the chocolate, they enjoy the profits. Their mission is to grow a successful global farmer-owned chocolate company and bring people together to create dignified trading relations, thereby empowering producers and consumers. Another mission is women's empowerment. Low levels of literacy due to historic lack of education for girls makes women less able to participate in training and more susceptible to being cheated. Despite women's important contribution, Cocoa farming is largely regarded as men's work, and women have traditionally had little access to the income from cocoa farming. Divine is working to change that. Ongoing sales of Divine Fund, investments in women's training, mentoring and capacity building in Kuapa Coco. Kuapa Coco has prioritized equal participation and equal access for women. Women have been learning a range of income generating skills and being encouraged to take positions of responsibility throughout the organization. Divine supports women's training programs. Equal training for women in cocoa farming practices helps women improve farm productivity and cocoa quality. 
Advancement of women as recorders elected by clerks provides opportunities to earn additional income. Women who earned extra household income use that money to keep their children, including girls, in school longer than families in villages where women's training was not as available. Making women a priority leads women members of COAPA to be loyal and encourages women to advocate for other women to join the cooperative. Examples of projects that fair trade premiums have founded include schools built in Coapa Coco farming villages, separate toilets facilities for men and women, bicycle program enabling children to go to from school more quickly, building wells to create more access to clean water, radio program for farmers, giving them access to information and resources. A video on women empowerment. I'm Comfort Kumia. I'm 59 years. I'll be 60 by next year, February. I have five children. I'm a cocoa farmer. I love joining Kwapa because Kwapa is a farmer's cooperative organization. And everything about Kwapa is transparent. There's no cheating. Our skills are perfect. About 12 years ago, if someone had ever thought or told me that comfort you will one day become the national secretary of Guapa or you will one day become an executive member. I would just have loved. But here I am, I've rise right from the society as a society executive member to the area as the area executive member. And now I'm on the top as the national secretary of Guapa Coco Farmers. What a great turning to women in Guapa. Kwapa involves women in all decision making. During elections, women have the power to contest for a position. In our National Executive Council members, out of the 20 elected members, 12 are women and 8 are men. This is a good sign of how women have been empowered to take part in all activities, in all, in all decision making. I saw that Kuapa was a cooperative farmers organization whereby every farmer has a say. I also saw that the scale was perfect. There wasn't any cheating. And because of that, I joined Kuapa. Kuapa Trade with Fair Trade, uh, an organization in the UK which seeks the welfare of its members and especially women. Women are trained to embark on income generating activities like making of soup extraction palm oil, making of batik tie and dye, and then rearing of snails. And through that, women get enough money to support their husbands in time of needs. Cocoa is a seasonal crop, so after the season, there wouldn't be enough money in the pockets of the family. So when a woman takes these income generation activities, the woman gets money, and through that, a woman can support the husband for the upkeep of the children, like education and then health. It's a great achievement, and I'm proud to be part of Club.